Hey, what's up? My name is Casey Conroy, and we are on The Cookhouse. Order up! Hey, what's up? I am Casey Conroy. I am a pop artist from here in Orlando, Florida. So, uh, growing up, my dad is a musician. He never pursued it um, as a job, but it was always his biggest passion. And so growing up, we just made music together all the time. We used to listen to music. He would show me all his favorite records. He would write songs and have me sing them. We would write songs together. Um, and it's funny, I always tell people that when I got older and I went into school, it was actually like a weird thing for me to find out that not everybody just writes songs and like sing songs with their family because it was the most natural thing for me to do. Um, and, and I listened to everything growing up. Mostly I listened to my dad's uh, iPod. So everything that he loved from Depeche Mode to Phil Collins and Stevie Nicks and Seal. And you know, I love 80s music. I grew up on a lot of that. And uh, then of course I listened to like all the kids stuff and I just listened to everything. I loved melodies, I loved storytelling. And, and yeah, it was just the always the most natural thing I knew how to do. So, I mean, kind of like I said, growing up, uh, I listened to a lot of 80s pop. Some of my favorites are uh, Phil Collins and Tears for Fears, AHA. And uh, I also am super inspired by just incredible songwriters. You know, Phil Collins is a great ex example, and Stevie Nicks, uh, Don McLean. I just loved people uh, who were amazing storytellers. And growing up, I was really, I was really connected to that. So, and then growing up, I kind of, some of my more recent inspirations, Kimbra is a really big influence uh, for me. She taught me really what it meant to be an artist. She made me excited of, about artistry. Uh, the Frank Ocean is probably the second biggest one. And then Coldplay. Coldplay is like my be all. I'd be all end all. My creative process for writing music is all over the place. It totally depends. You know, I'm super big on just you keep showing up, and when inspiration hits, it will hit, and you're just you have to be there to give it a space, a safe space, safe place, and allow it to grow. Sometimes that looks like just sitting down and listening to music for hours until you get really inspired. Sometimes there's a line you can't get out of your head. Sometimes I just really have something I need to say. Sometimes I'm going through something, I need that music therapy, that songwriting therapy. Uh, and yeah, a lot of times I I love to um, put myself in other people's shoes. I love to think about concepts and situations that maybe I haven't gone through and try to sit back and think, well, what must it be like to be in that situation and write a song from that perspective? Um, but in terms of then the process, usually, you know, you do the songwriting and then uh, Willie and I, we do, who's here with me, you can't see him, he's off the screen. But we write a lot together um, and then we'll go in the studio together and, and we'll produce the songs and we kind of just let it flow the way it needs to. And a lot of times if it's the right song and we're super excited about it, you know, we'll finish it really fast and we'll kind of just, it keeps us on our toes and we want to, you know, keep following it until it becomes what it is and flow, like flourishes into a full song. So my song, Background Noise, uh, I wrote this song in a time where I started to feel very overwhelmed um, by being compared to other artists all the time, being, you know, just surrounded by, not to be, cliche, but by noise, like so much background noise and especially with social media. And I, I just found myself doing it to myself, honestly, of just comparing myself to other people and feeling frustrated and feeling like, you know, I just really need to be in the space where I need to block out all of that extra crap and really just hone in on, on me and what makes me me. And so background noise is, it's two things. It's, it's almost, uh, it's a frustration song. There's a lot of like, there's some anger maybe in it, but at the same time, it's kind of an, an anthem for being unique and individuality and being strong enough um, to, to be and do you. 
So I originally wrote background noise uh, very much, like I was saying, just in the moment. The idea came, like literally coming home, feeling angry and frustrated with this emotion, sitting down at my computer and writing pretty much, you know, the, probably the, I think the first verse and the hook. And then uh, my producer and co-songwriter Willie and I, we got together uh, and we kind of made it into a full song after that. Uh, I, I knew the ideas and I knew what I wanted and I knew what I what I wanted to say. Um, and we got to go through this really cool process of then like turning it in to a full song. And, and honestly, I know you asked about the good parts and the bad parts. And, and a lot of times there are uh, definitely both of those, but this song was a, a very natural, I think, because there was so much raw emotion in it. I knew exactly what I wanted to say and how I wanted to say it. And so it, it was pretty fast. Um, and what I love about this song is that there's this, if you hear it and you understand kind of the message of it, there's kind of this contrast and irony of the song because the message is intense. The message is, um, it's very real and vulnerable. But the song, like, it just makes you want to get up and dance around your room. And that was a really fun part of the process, was trying to figure out how do I tell a, a very strong story, um, but also kind of rebel against that in a way and, and allow it to kind of be just this fun, lighthearted anthem at the same time. Yes, there is. Uh, there is a key change in the song. And it's the first time I ever did a key change in a song. And it's really, f I just, it was really fun to explore that and, and you know, how was the, how are we gonna make that smooth and, and pull it off and make it feel like the right next step. Um, and so there's this really fun bridge. It's, it's almost like, a, like, if you hear it, it's kind of like a chanting kind of like you're talking kind of bridge, which is different for what I usually do. Um, and then I was just so excited to build the intensity with a key change. I mean, we just, we, I've never done it before. So that's by far my favorite part of the song. This song specifically is very much, I just want it to inspire people to be exactly who they are, be really proud of that, know that that makes them unique, especially in a day like today where the market is just, you know, crazy saturated. You don't have to go looking for what makes you special. You just have to be brave enough to trust that instinct and to, to follow, um, not to be cheesy, but what's in your heart. <laughs> Well, number one, I can't wait to perform like crazy. Performing is funny enough, like to give a little backstory, I used to have the craziest stage fright. Like if I had a show on Friday, I would be sick on Monday, like to my stomach, like just horrible. And because I had such a bad stage fright, I had to do so much performing to get over it that there came a point where I found a comfort, comfortability is that a word on stage. Um, and so now playing live is probably like my favorite part of being an artist. And so I had done, I think about like 20 live stream shows uh, in 2020. And now I'm just dying for human interaction and connection. And so I've done about, uh, I think like five or six live in person shows now that we're back, um, but I just can't wait to play like crazy. And uh, we'll be releasing a bunch of music this year. I have an EP that I'm working on that will be coming out. It's my debut EP. I'm so excited to release a project uh, and kind of get to show fans and, and just audiences what makes me me right now in this moment of my life. So lots, lots of fun things coming. Definitely text message, but I say that, but also at the same time, if you really want to get a hold of me, I should not even say this to people, but I am the worst with text message because I read it and then I'm in, like I'm doing something and I have no short term memory and I do not remember to come back. So if you really need to get a hold of me, probably phone calls better, but I prefer text. Dogs. I don't like cats. <laughs> It depends on the mood. 
that is what a, such a cheat answer, but sometimes it depends. Sometimes I'm in a mood that I don't even want to listen to music really, and then podcasts are perfectly. I love them both equally, they just have different times. This is easy. Some of these aren't as really easy for me because Disney, I have an annual pass and it's like the most valuable thing I have. I love Disney. Roller coaster because skydive, I would love to go skydiving, but I always think like if I died going skydiving, I would like literally be in heaven. I'll be like, that was not worth it. So yeah, roller coaster. Easy, I love Waffle House, for sure. An adult mind in a child body or a child. Wow. Now, do you stay that way forever? Um, that's where you progress your life. Oh, then definitely adult mind and child body. Because then when you grow up, you're gonna have to be mind stuff. Okay, this is a conversation to be had because a night in. But the reason why this is important is because this is a new thing for me. Because when I was growing up, and even like up to last year, I was a night out. Like that made me, I was like a major extrovert. I would much rather like go out and, hang, and like, you know, be around people. And lately, maybe this is 2020, maybe this is panic, I don't know. But I am becoming such a homebody. I just want to be in my house, watch movies on the couch sometimes. So the new answer to this is, staying in. I worry I don't have enough information about either of those things to make the best answer. I will answer, and my dad, if he sees this, will be very sad that I'm saying this, because he would hope that I had enough knowledge about either of those things. So lightsabers, you can just like cut people in half, or what's the thing with lightsabers? Like, I don't, and probably Thor's hammer. I don't know why, but I feel like it's a little more Powerful? Maybe I'm lying. I have no idea. I'm gonna go with Thor's hammer. <laughs> oh, ice. Yeah, I don't like warm temperature. So this is hard for me because I love to read and I love watching movies. But I will say if I've read the book, I never enjoy the movie as much as the book. So if I haven't seen, I love watching movies. I actually might like watching movies a little more than I like reading, but if I've seen the book, I totally choose the book over the movie. City. I'm definitely more of a city person. But maybe this is gonna change because remember I was an extrovert and now I'm introverted, so maybe that's gonna change, but I love the city. Hey, I've been Casey Conroy on The Cook House. Be sure to follow me for lots of fun stuff coming soon. And don't forget to comment and subscribe on this video. Thank you for watching.